Okay, so we are here at the end of this canning project, but the beginning of this video. So I didn't record an intro clip because I just kind of jumped into it and started filming some clips of me working on this mango salsa for this video. And so I wanted to film a little bit of an introduction here. Today, like I just spoiled, we are gonna be making mango salsa. So we've got this beautiful mango salsa that I just created, just, just created, that I just took out of the canner and um, made up and it tastes amazing. I did a little taste, but we are gonna be making this following the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. This is from the National Institute of Food and Agriculture and it was revised in 2015. This is the 2020 printing. And so we're gonna be following the recipe in here with one minor addition. And I hope you stick around to see how we got from simple ingredients to this wonderful, beautiful, amazing mango salsa that I'm so excited to have on the pantry shelf. So I will see you when we rewind and go back to last night when we started this project. Okay, so I've started cutting up these mangoes and honestly, cutting them up the other day when I did the mango chutney was not fun. Um, and so today I have been playing around and trying to figure out how best to um, kind of process them and get them ready for the recipes that we're gonna do. And so I figured uh, hopefully by me showing this, some of you out there who maybe might be following along and trying this recipe, um, we'll also not have to go find out other ways to like cut up mangoes and I'm sure there's other better ways to do this I haven't even looked like for a YouTube video or anything. I just found something that seems to be working well for me and I'm gonna show you what that is. So you see I've already done some so essentially I just take my mango and I have just a regular like kind of peeler that normally I use for like potatoes or carrots or different things and I'm actually going to start down here by this, um, the kind of little brown spot on the bottom where I think it connects to the tree. And I am just going to use this. And of course, while I'm doing it on camera, it's not going to work. So essentially, I just take this down and peel it down and make sure that I'm getting off all of the kind of green skin part. So like here you see there's a little extra green. So when I go... I don't know if you can see that. So right there is some extra green. And so I'm just gonna go over that again. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't remove too much of the mango. It just takes off the a very small layer because this is a very, um, this peeler doesn't take much off. And so honest, so I've just been kind of going around and doing that. Sometimes you get into spots where it's a little bit, um, kind of softer and so that's harder to maneuver but for the most part it works pretty well and once you get towards the end of the mango it does get a little hard to hold on to it because it starts getting slippery especially when you're wearing whoops especially when you're wearing these gloves um so if you're wondering why am I wearing these gloves um I haven't had a reaction to mangoes to like touching them and I've touched the outside the like with my bare hands um, but in all the recipes that I've been looking up it has this like caution warning on it um, or on the recipes saying that if you handle unripe mangoes or if you handle mangoes that are still pretty green there is I think it said something like mangoes are in the same family as poison ivy or something like that. And so it can irritate the skin. Something in the skin of the mangoes can irritate your skin or my skin. And so that's why I'm wearing these gloves, just to kind of protect me. And it says, do not touch your face, lips, or eyes after touching or cutting raw green mangoes until all traces are washed away. So because there's a big disclaimer, I'm gonna follow them, even though I haven't really had much of an issue so far. So cut up your mangoes at your own risk. But once I get all the peels off, you see that was super quick. I just then take a knife and cut out the bottom part of the mango where that kind of stem is. And then I'll show you in um, just a second here how I'm going to cut up the actual mango because inside here is a really big seed. 
um, that is also hard to get around. So I'm gonna set these mangoes in my peels bucket for a second. Um, so I can hopefully show you, this is the part that I don't really have a super good solution for, but essentially I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut down the mango and I've kind of laid it, um, you can kind of tell with them, they have like a section, they have a side that is like shorter and squat and a side that is uh, longer or wider. And so I laid it on kind of the flatter side um, because the seed is kind of like a flat oval. Um, so I think that's how it's gonna be oriented. So I'm gonna just cut down here until I can kind of feel the hard seed in the middle. And I am just going to cut down into kind of chunks here. And actually the ends, you can pretty much just cut off the edges. Um, of each side once you lay it on its flat kind of um, on its flat back and you have these pieces which are completely fine to then go ahead and dice up. So for these when I have um, this these kind of slits across the top so they're kind of in chunks I kind of go over here on the side where I cut the edge off and I kind of follow it along guide the knife underneath there and you can kind of hear when you're cutting into the, you can hear and feel when you're cutting into the seed. It's kind of like a, it kind of sounds like sawing and it's also harder. And so you can see like when I tap, it makes that noise. And you can also see inside, it gets really kind of white right along that seed and you can see where you're cutting into it. And even if you scrape against it, you can hear it. So I just kind of do that and try to follow as close to the seed as I can um, when I am cutting these mangoes off, or cutting the flesh off. And so you can see those fall right off. Actually, that went pretty well. Um, so then I'll do that to one side and then go to the other and just kind of go back and forth until I feel like I've gotten most of the flesh off. Um, and that's pretty much how I'm cutting up these mangoes or the best way I've found on my own. Like I said, there's probably better ways and I haven't really looked them up. Um, so if you want an easier way, maybe there's an easier way out there. Um, okay, well let's go back to actually putting this mango salsa together. Okay, so it's really quite rude that this mango box actually decided to come for me like that uh, because I just recorded a clip where I'm talking about how I don't really know how to cut a mango and here's how I'm doing it. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there's better ways. And then the mango box literally tells you exactly how to cut a mango. Okay, so I've prepared all the ingredients for this mango salsa and I'm actually going to double the recipe because I had the ingredients for it and this one recipe only makes about six half pint jars and I wanted six pint jars. And so I decided to double the recipe. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm adding as I go. Remember, this is doubled. So I'm adding 12 cups of diced mango. And there is also a cup of yellow onions in here as well. I just put them in the same bowl because there was room. So essentially, we're going to add everything here into our Dutch oven to um, then cook down on the stove. So, okay, there's all of those. And then in addition to that, I'm gonna add two, um, actually three cups of red bell pepper. So putting those in there, making sure we don't leave anything behind. And then I'm going to add a bunch of different um, spices and different stuff. So a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I'm going to add four teaspoons of chopped garlic, four teaspoons of chopped ginger, and that will go in there. And got some stuff sticking in there, so I'll just get that out. Okay, and then we're also going to add two cups of light brown sugar. Make sure this pot is just going to be big enough. 
So then we're going to add, this is a mixture of our apple cider vinegar and water. So it's gonna be one cup of water, and then it's going to be two and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. So because it's two and a half cups, I need to go ahead and fill this up to another half cup and add that in there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this on the um, stove and I'm going to bring it to a boil over high heat while stirring so that we're dissolving the sugar. And then I am going to um, reduce that to simmer and just simmer it for five minutes. Um, okay, I will check back in actually probably tomorrow because it's a little late. So I'm going to cook this, throw it in the fridge, and then I'll recook it tomorrow and um, jar it up. That is my plan. I'm going to also do some research in the meantime to make sure that that is a safe practice to do. Okay, I will check in with you tomorrow. Okay, so it is the next day and Essentially, it got really late last night, and so I, after cooking the salsa, put it in the fridge overnight, and I'm heating it back up and heating up the water bath canner, so that way we can go ahead, and tonight we're just going to go ahead and can it up. But before I do that, I wanted to make sure and try this and see how the flavors are. I was thinking that, and you know, I might need to spice it up a little bit, and so to do that, I might add some cilantro uh, flakes and then also maybe some habaneros if it's not spicy enough, um, because I have some for another recipe that I'm gonna make, which of course, a video will be made about that. It's gonna be some mango habanero sauce, so stay tuned for that. Um, but why don't we, actually before I taste this, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it up a little bit because it's a little chunky and I want just a, I want some chunks, but I want it to be a little bit uh, kind of smoother than it is now. So I'm gonna take my immersion blender here, plug that puppy in, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and blend some of this up. what that is looking like. So, it's definitely still chunky, but it's a little bit more smooth. I'm just going to do a little bit more of a blend, and then I'll probably call that good. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that is looking really nice. So I'm going to actually set that aside, put this in the dish sink. The dish sink? That doesn't... In the sink. Okay, and then let's go ahead and try this. probably pretty good um yeah it's really sweet there's definitely some heat I think I'm just gonna add some of these cilantro flakes and then that's it I don't think I'm gonna add the habaneros I, I like it the way it is we can obviously you know if we use it in recipes um in the future if we want to when we're actually cooking with it um we can definitely spice it up or make it hotter do different things but for right now, I think I want to leave it where it is because I also really just like eating mango salsa with some chips. And so I'm going to leave it where it is so that I have that opportunity and I can always change things later when we crack the jars open. So I am going to actually gonna take this cover off so it's a little easier. I'm going to throw Maybe about that much. I don't know how much that is. Maybe like two tablespoons, maybe. Um, 
So I'm just gonna stir this in and then maybe I'll give it one more try before we can this up. It is actually starting to boil. So it is getting back up to the right temperature. Oh my gosh, this is literally so gorgeous. I'm obsessed with it. You know, it's the little things in life that bring us joy. And this is definitely what brings me joy. Okay, so I'm gonna give it one more try. I don't know if the cilantro leaves are really gonna make that much of a difference, but I saw someone else at it, and so I wanted to as well. Okay. Ooh, that is yummy. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's really good. So, um, it is starting to splatter everywhere, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because it is definitely boiling. Um, all we needed to do was bring it back up to temperature because yesterday we went ahead and simmered it with that boil for um, the five minutes that is uh, in the recipe. And so this is actually looking pretty good. So, I'm gonna check on these jars and see where we're at with those. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here so it's a little easier um, filling the jars and also filming, but also so it comes off of that heat and the bottom doesn't scorch at all. So, I'm gonna actually... Okay, let's readjust you so you can kind of see what we're doing. Well, look at that. You're over here now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this water bath canner was heating up the jars, and I'll leave the water to continue heating up in there, but I think our jars are warm enough. Yeah, they are really boiling here. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump that water that is in them back into the water bath canner, bring them over here, maybe two at a time. And then I put this towel down, um, that way the jars aren't shocked too much going from this boiling water over onto a cold countertop. So I brought them over here, and our recipe says that we are going to leave half an inch of headspace. So I just want to make sure I'm at the right notch here, looking at that, okay, on our debubbler. So, I am going to get our funnel. And we are going to start filling these jars. I cannot stop staring at this salsa. It is just so absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to not touch this pot because it's going to burn me. Okay. And we are looking for half an inch of head space here, people. So let's fill that up a bit. See where we're at. This is always, you know, because I'm new at this, I always go back and forth, back and forth, trying to get that right amount of head space. It's always hard for me. Okay. So I'm going to debubble. With this, I think it is not as important as some things but definitely still want to follow best practices, make sure we're getting any air bubbles out. And every so often, just one chunk of mango will come up and that's so gorgeous, so beautiful. Okay, and we actually, after debubbling, can still fit some more in there. And of course my hand has to slip, so I make a mess on the edge of this jar, but that's okay, because we are going to clean it up once we're done with some vinegar on a paper towel, as we always do. Okay, look at that. So, got this jar done. Woo, that one is hot, hot, hot. So over here we have our vinegar in a level jar. So I am going to completely wipe the rims. And if there's ever a big glob of something on the rim, I have been just wiping it off and then folding over the paper towel because I do not want to be 
I want to be actually cleaning this jar. I don't want to be spreading around those things that could cause an issue and make it so that the jar doesn't seal. Okay. So then, oops, that is not where that goes. Okay. Let's get our lid. And then, um, I already, before all of this, checked the jars to make sure there was no cracks on the rims. So I am going to turn this until some resistance and then just fingertip tight and look at how beautiful and gorgeous this jar of mango salsa is. Well, maybe if it would focus and it's starting to get hot. So let me just look at that. You've got those chunks of bell pepper. You can't really see deep in there. Well, right there, you can kind of see um, there's a chunk of mango. And wow, my focusing game is rough. But yeah, you can see those red bell peppers. You can see those chunks of mango in there and then some cilantro and it's just gorgeous. Okay, well we're gonna keep going, fill up these jars and get them in the water bath canner. So I'm filling up my last jar here and the recipe originally said that it was going to make six half pints. And I knew I wanted to can this up in pint jars and I wanted six pint jars because I figured I was probably going to like it. And of course, you know me, go big or go home. And so I heated up in the water bath canner, I heated up um, seven jars just as a, like just in case, in case I need an extra jar, then I don't have to worry about it. But actually this recipe, and I know I'm not like super, you know, precise with the measurements, at least I wasn't super precise with the like um, measurements of the like fruit and veg that are in here. And so I actually ended up filling up all seven of those jars and then I needed another one, but I didn't have another one heated. So what I actually did is our faucet water runs so hot if on the hottest setting that sometimes it feels like it's going to burn you. So I put a jar, a clean jar that I had underneath there and just turned the faucet on. And as it warmed up from the cold water to the hot, I am hoping it slowly brought this jar up. And actually that doesn't seem like it even really mattered because this is not full. And so I am actually going to just put this one in the fridge and we are going to enjoy it throughout the week. And so I actually got seven pint jar, or seven, yeah, seven pint jars and almost an eighth pint jar out of this recipe. So I'm very happy with that. So for this jar that's gonna go in my fridge, I am not going to use one of the new canning lids. Instead, I am going to use a lid that has already been used um, for the purposes of canning, because you're not supposed to reuse lids, except in this case, like you can reuse lids for things like this or to put like herbs or different things in. You just can't reuse lids for the actual canning process. So I'm gonna use one of these. I'm gonna just set this aside until it cools down and then I'll put it in the fridge. But I'm gonna take you over here because we are gonna load up this water bath canner with the, this precious, precious mango salsa. Okay, so I'm going to be very careful here taking this cover off because this is going crazy with its boil. So I'm going to use my jar lifter and grab each of these and carefully lower them into the water. And we're gonna put this cover back on, bring this back up to a boil, and then we're gonna water bath can it for 20 minutes because of our ele elevation and because these are pint jars. And the water is definitely above um, the jars by more than um, an inch or two inches. It's higher than that, so we should be good there. So I am going to put this lid back on so it can come up to a boil 
And then we're gonna boil that for 20 minutes. Okay, so this has finished with its 20 minutes of water bath canning. And so I removed the jars and I'm just gonna let them cool over here for a bit on um, probably like 12 to 24 hours, I think is how long you're supposed to let them cool before I write on them, clean them up, um, if any of them are dirty, I don't think they are, and then put them away. So I wanted to come back and show you though, because all of these look absolutely stunning. So take a look at that. Beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful mango salsa. So like I said, we got seven of these jars, so hopefully all of them seal, and that is gonna be amazing to have when we have guests over, to experiment the different recipes that we can use it in, and just to eat it on its own. Um, I am a big salsa person as a snack, and so I will probably be eating a lot of this just hanging out on the couch. So that is gonna do it for this video. So I wanna say thank you so much for sticking around, for watching till the end. If you've got any fun ideas on how maybe you've changed up this recipe or things that you've used mango salsa or you could envision using mango, mango salsa for in recipes like for dinner and different things, please, please, please let me know um, because I definitely will try out some of those things. And yeah. Until next time, stay grounded.